Hi, Nicola Askham here, back for another in the Ask the Data Governance Coach video series. And today's question is how to identify data owners when multiple areas of the organization use the same data. Now, I think this is a really good question. It is something I come across an awful lot when helping my clients do data governance. And I'm sure you will too when you're doing data governance. Because you know, unless the data is only used by one area, it's often not clear cut who the data owner should be. But in my experience, it really is important that you only have one data owner per data set. Because if you have any more, what you end up is a situation where you know, a number of people get together and they discuss and debate the data, but they rarely come to any conclusions and they just totally derail your data governance initiative and it doesn't work. So I believe very strongly you want just one data owner per data set. And, you know, this can be challenging if you have multiple people using the same data and even more challenging when they will want to own the data. So there are a number of different ways of, of dealing with this. And my preferred way is to see if I can break down the data to identify, you know, different chunks of it. So for one organization, which was an insurer, we um, had a big debate over who owned customer data and the head of underwriting believed quite strongly that they owned it. But also the head of, of marketing believed that they owned customer data. And when we sat and talked to them, we actually um, agreed that actually they own different subsets of it. So we broke it down and we had customer risk details that the underwriting area owned. And we had customer contact details that the marketing team owned. And that worked very, very well for um, a few months. They got on and did everything we asked them to do as part of doing data governance until we got to the day where somebody reported a data quality issue with postcode. And, and my heart sank because I had this horrible feeling that I knew what was going to happen. And I was right. When we asked them both who owns postcode, they both said they did. They both believed it was them. But interestingly, because we had split the data out, they'd both been doing the role and got their head around it for a few months. We got them back together and discussed it. And at that point, the head of marketing said, you know what, I actually don't think I am the data owner. I think I'm a key consumer of the data and I want my needs and requirements of that data to be considered. But I don't actually think I'm the right person to be the data owner. So at that point, we put all customer details back into one data set and had one data owner. So splitting it sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. I think you have to be flexible and, and understand that you may need to change it again further down the line. But that doesn't stop you from trying. The other way of doing it, if um, that isn't an option and you can't find a, a selection with that, is to um, look at, you know, is there one of those areas that really does dictate the standards by which that data is captured? You know, do you have somebody that is setting the rules and saying this is how we do this? Because in which case they should be the data owner. There is no way that they shouldn't be because, you know, you couldn't have anybody else being the data owner if you've got another team elsewhere in your organization that is allowed to set the rules around that data. And then in very rare circumstances, I sometimes come up with a two-level data owner model. I prefer to use that as an absolute last resort because adding any complexity to your data governance framework makes it harder to embed and harder to make it successful. So I wouldn't um, advise that approach unless you've tried everything else and there really is no other options. And in that area, what I would do is maybe you've got two areas that both feel very strongly that they should be the data owners and actually they're using the data in very different ways, although it's the same data. And in that case, um, we sometimes allow them to be data owners, um, but what we do is have an overarching data owner above them. I, I sometimes call it a, a data domain owner um, that is does the arbitration that makes sure that consistent decisions are made across the entire data set. So I hope that has helped. Um, if you have found it useful, please help me get the message out there and help even more people by sharing this video on your choice of social media. I really appreciate your help with that. And if you've got a question that you would like me to cover in a future video, please just email it in to questions at nicolaaskham.com.